Line missile system, one that can apparently track down and shoot down aircraft and intercept air strikes anywhere near its borders. And the missiles come from Russia. A Pentagon spokesman tells Fox News that defense officials are concerned about this possible sale. According to the reporting of the Reuters news agency, Iranian officials are planning to sign a contract uh, next week for several Russian made missile systems. Actually, the number is four. A Russian arms producer says Moscow is selling Iran one of the most advanced air defense systems in all the world, and it is. World powers reached a nuclear deal weeks ago, offering Iran relief from international sanctions as long as the secretive regime scales back its nuclear program. The deal also lifts a United Nations weapons embargo on Iran after several years, but not right now. Still, the Russian President Vladimir Putin lifted his country's own ban on selling missile systems to Iran back in April, shortly after the announcement of the framework for the nuclear agreement. Michael Singh joins us now. He's a former senior director for Middle East Affairs at the National Security Council. He's currently managing director of the Washington Institute, which describes itself as a nonpartisan think tank. Michael, good to see you again. Good to see you, Chef. This should surprise no one in the know. Uh, Vladimir Putin needs money. He lifted this ban and told the whole world he was doing it. And that he would sell them a, a defense system, an air defense system, is right in line with what was predicted. Chuck Schumer this week came out against this Iranian nuclear deal. That was an act of courage and bravery, and I salute Chuck Schumer for doing it. Well, that was Republican Senator Ted Cruz of Texas praising a liberal Democrat, New York Senator Chuck Schumer, who stung the White House this week by announcing he will not support the Iranian nuclear deal. Schumer, of course, one of the nation's top Democrats, the likely successor to Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid. Well, now he's being attacked by former Obama administration officials and White House spokesman Josh Earnest for going against the president. So what does this mean for the looming congressional vote on the deal that's coming up in September? Fred Flights is a former CIA analyst and a senior vice president with the Center for Security Policy. You know, Fred, Schumer says no for several reasons. One, he cites no anytime, anywhere inspections. That 24 delay in going into any sites. He's critical that this all has to be approved by a commission. He's worried that Iran can get a nuke in 10 years, not to mention ICBMs and the hundreds of millions potentially for terrorism. Where is Senator Schumer wrong? I don't think he's right. Schumer's colleague, Senator Kristen Gillibrand uh, of New York, a fellow Democrat, also says she supports the deal. Uh, writing, quote, if we reject this deal, we do not have a viable alternative for preventing Iran from obtaining nuclear weapons. Without a deal, without inspectors on the ground, we will be left in the dark as Iran resumes its pursuit of a nuclear weapon with only months to go before it could enrich enough fissile material for a bomb. Fred, isn't it at least better to have some inspections or some ability than no inspections at all if there's no deal? This agreement does not provide inspections for all nuclear sites. It only provides intensive inspections of declared sites. There's an appeal process to get access to other sites, and if we press for sanctions if Iran does not allow access, Iran pulls out of the deal. So Iran has leverage to protect sites where it's engaged in nuclear activity. Perspective from one of the deal's chief critics within the president's own party. Joining us tonight, New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez. Senator, thanks for being here. Good to be here. Your first impression of what you've seen, what you've heard about all that's in here. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm going to have to go through the whole agreement, and I look forward to uh, Chairman Corker's commitment to very vigorous uh, review of the agreement uh, before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. But there's some takeaways that you can see at first glance. Number one is we're basically legitimizing Iran's nuclear program and saying there is a nuclear threshold state uh, in Iran. Secondly, we're not ending Iran's nuclear infrastructure. Uh, in some elements of it, we're preserving it. Uh, and uh, I have real concerns about some of our red lines have been crossed. I, I don't read in this agreement anytime, anywhere inspections, for example, which are critical when you have a 20-year history of Iran deceiving the world and having covert uh, facilities to enrich uranium. And finally, uh, at first blush again, uh, when you lift the arms embargo to a country that is the major sponsor of state terrorism uh, in the world, uh, and is already destabilizing the region in Yemen and Lebanon and Syria in Iraq to give them after they're going to get a hundred to hundred and fifty billion dollars worth of economic relief the opportunity to buy conventional weapons and improve their missile technology doesn't seem to me to be in the national interest of the United States.